with this card, this has been 10 years in the making, they say. Have you been on board for all 10 of those years? I've been on board at NVIDIA for about 15 years. Yeah, way back in ye old 2008, what were you thinking when that ray tracing was announced as the actual goal? Like, where do you even start? Well, you know, you, you start with understanding what is the approximation? How do, you, how do you begin with the mathematics of ray tracing? And I think it takes years to really understand how do you take something that's like simulate all the photons in the world and then find a way to simplify that so that you can build an algorithm that shows great looking images. So just like everything else we do at NVIDIA, it's all science based and a deep, deep appreciation for what is the algorithm that we're trying to model and then how can we turn that into silicon. It's pretty awesome. Now, 10 years on the other side, you've actually got the finished card, not just in your hands, it's in PCs all around the room around it's us. It's pretty exciting. What's that feeling like? It, you know, <laughs> I, can, I can say that all of our engineers right now are very proud. And the work that they've done shows just the world that world class engineering applied over a long period of time can deliver incredible results. So I personally, I, I'm just proud to be part of the team, part of NVIDIA that brought this technology to market because it really is going to change the future. Like people in the future are going to look back at, a, at games that have happened before now and they're going to say, uh, you know, that's okay, but wow, look at it now with the lights that look real and the reflections that look real. So seeing technology go from concept through iteration after iteration to finally see it, it's, it's just really heartfelt. How do you feel about the final result of the card itself, just to look at and hold? I think it's beautiful. You know, we have a huge team of thermal engineers all over the world. We have ID designers working on this kind of concept for forever. But we've always wanted to do a dual axial fan because the dual axial fan can actually give you more performance at lower acoustics. But getting a dual axial to look good is really quite difficult. But I gotta say, our thermal team, our ID team, our mechanical team, our board team, they've just broken all the rules. We've built the largest vapor chamber for a graphics card ever. It's a full length vapor chamber. It evacuates all the heat. It's just a delightful design and it's super quiet. I'm Really proud of the work they've done. So today is the 20th when it was announced, I think, intentionally. And one month from now, on the 20th of September, people are going to actually be able to have these in their rigs and start playing. Yeah. What do you think their yeah. reaction is going to be? Well, I think they're going to love it because we've, we've taken a performance from, you know, really great with Pascal, and somehow we've managed to go far beyond that. And not only that, we've built a thermal design that has incredible acoustics, incredible power capability, and the chip is an overclocking monster. So I think I've said this many times in the past, a lot of gamers love to tweak and overclock, but it's hard to build chips that do that really well. We've really exceeded with Turing. That chip you can take and you can push it to the absolute limit. So I'm pretty excited. Um, and the truth is we've, we've been working with partners for a very long time and they're going to be ready to go on September 20th. So it's not just the Founders Edition, it's going to be all of our partners at retail available on the 20th. That's great because we're getting questions from the stream and we've actually compiled a few of them and you're answering Let's a few do it. as we go. But I have a few questions from you from our viewers. One of them is, how does all this translate to playing older games with a 2080? Well, of course, if you don't take advantage of the tensor cores or the, um, the DLL structure, effectively, you're going to be playing only on the floating point part of the chip. Now, the floating part of the chip is faster as well. So good news here, older games are going to get faster even if they don't use the new hardware. So you'll see more data as the reviews come out as they do performance testing, but I think you're going to see a very nice bump on traditional games. But when you run an RTX game, that's when you're really going to see these orders of magnitude, you know, new experiences that you've never been able to do before. Yeah, we have one viewer who says, real-time ray tracing is cool, but can it run PUBG at 30 FPS? Uh, yes, it could definitely run PUBG at 30 FPS. I, you know, I have not done the whole can it run crisis thing in a while because <laughs> we kicked crisis's ass. Yeah, we need a new challenge. <laughs> crisis is, is so two years ago. <laughs> Um, we also have a viewer asking us, uh, when are games going to use ray tracing? Well, we gave a whole list of games tonight about the, the ones that are using it. We're working with key developers, some, but some of these are huge titles like Battlefield 5 and Metro. So it's going to be very, very soon. As soon as we deploy infrastructure, as soon as we build out the chips and the, and the cards, that's when games come. What I'm curious about with this card and the ray tracing technology, you know, NVIDIA and game developers have had so many tips and tricks to kind of work around not being able to accurately simulate light, you know, right. HBO Plus, that sort of thing. Uh, what does that mean for video performance when those things are off but ray tracing is on? Yeah, it's true. So uh, over time, you're going to see content that just sort of stops focusing on all these funny tricks that they've had to use in the past, and they're going to start optimizing for ray tracing. It's because ray tracing can give you better images at lower production costs. 
and that will allow people to do better games, more levels, bigger levels. So it's, you know, like everything we do at NVIDIA, this is a long-term thing, and it's going to take time for gamers and games to kind of learn how to develop content for ray tracing, and it's going to change everything. So you are now Basically, your big announcement is done here at Gamescom. What's your plan for the rest of your time here? Well, we have a ton of press here. So um, after we do the big launch for the for the people and, and everybody gets to understand the product, we have to train and, and help people understand the technology. And, you know, Jensen did a great job of, of teeing it up and helping people understand the big picture, but there's a lot of detail behind that to really help people appreciate how this thing works. And we're going to take care of that the rest of this week while we're in Cologne. And then, of course, we go back, and it's one big education, getting through this product cycle, ramping production, a lot of work in front of us. People also want to know, you know, the, the 1070 card was an amazing price point for performance. People want to know how the 2070 is going to stack up and scale with the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. Yeah, well, the 2070 is an absolute monster performance-wise. I mean, you saw how it stacks up using the Turing Core. It is very high performance. It is very high, great performance on RTX-type applications. So 2070 is going to be another one of those, like, perfect price point, perfect GPUs, it's going to be huge volume. Tab, it's been a pleasure having you. We're going to show off some more of the, the actual products that you guys saw here today. But in the meantime, you know, I think you've earned just to have an excellent time here at Gamescom. Thank you very much. Built an amazing product Colch. and it's been a pleasure. Colch. Thanks Good to so see much. You. Thanks. All right, guys, check out some more of this new RTX two, uh, 2000 series. 2000 the series. RTX 2000, 2000 the 20 series. series. Check it out.